This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. On Money Talks, we discuss money news and take your questions about personal finance. For 15 years, we've provided free financial information for Mississippians. I hope you can join me, Dr. Nancy Lotridge Anderson, co-host of Money Talks, Tuesdays at 9 a.m. or anytime on our podcast. Welcome to AutoCorrect, helping you correct your auto problems. Our host is Coach Charlie Melton, ASC Certified Master Technician. I'm Jermaine Flood. Hello, Coach Charlie. Hello, how are you doing today? Doing good, Coach. Guess where we're at, Coach? We are at cruising on the coast, the 27th and your Do you already know? You already know the topic that for the day. Right. <laughs> that is right. Hey, we're going to talk about old cars and any other questions you may have today. Right. It's a beautiful day outside. If you ever wanted any perfect weather, the perfect weather is right here in Gulfport, Mississippi at the 27th annual Cruising the Coast. So, Coach, you know I always have a definition or description. So let me tell the audience all about cruising. So it's America's largest block party, and it began in 1996 as a festival to celebrate antique, classic, and hot rod vehicles, nostalgic music, and related events. And with close to 10,000 registered vehicles, car enthusiasts from 40 states plus Canada, Germany, and Puerto Rico arrive right here on the Gulf Coast once a year to showcase their rides and cruise the state's beautiful 30-mile stretch of Beachside Highway with designated stops in Bay St. Louis, Biloxi, D'Iberville, Gulfport, Pass, Christiane, Ocean Springs, and Pascagoula. Now, each venue is set up as a mini festival with a stage for live bands, reserved parking for registered cruisers, spectator parking and vendors for food and event merchandise. And they have over 12 host car clubs providing 700 volunteers who help with registered vehicles, directing cars at the venues, giving directions and welcoming guests. And Coach, you know what? We're live from this bad boy. We are live and we're able to see all these beautiful cars out here. You know, we got up early, come out here, and now we're getting to see all these cars and talk to the people. Right. Is this a first for you coming down for cruising the coast? This is the first. You know, I always wanted to come down when I was teaching and bring the students down, but just never got a chance because of school. Yeah. This is the first, and hey, I love it already. Yeah. Now, the times I've come, it, it's been on accident, so this is my first purposeful time coming down, but I have enjoyed myself from the time I stepped foot on the beach. Hey, so You just see so many different cars out here, and you know, it's just wonderful. Right. I want to introduce, though, the man who helped bring us here, um, Mr. Cruising himself, Cruising Craig. Cru- uh, Craig, welcome to uh, AutoCorrect. Hey, thanks for having me this morning. Great to be here. It's great to have you, man. How busy have you been with the whole cruise in this entire week? Are you on your downslope now? Oh, no. Oh, uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> we still got a lot more fun to have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday morning. Uh, we'll give out cash prizes and some other awards and stuff like that. So we're about halfway through the fun. Right, right, right. Now, when it comes down to cars, are you that total car man for sure? Always have been. You know, my, my dad was a car guy who never had a car. He had a family yeah. instead, so he never really had a hot rod, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. And like so many of the other people here, we had cars and hot rods as youngsters, yeah. you know, early yeah. early 20s. You get married, you have a family, yeah. whatever the case may be, yeah. you get rid of your stuff. Well, when you get to be an old guy like me, you get kids started. are gone. <laughs> That's right. So you buy a hot rod, you know? <laughs> right, right, right. Or you build another hot rod and you come on up. But yeah, I, I mean, dirt track racing, drag racing, anything with wheels on it, matchbox cars, I love it all. Yeah, yeah. Now, when it comes down to the cars, why should people come down here and enjoy themselves at cruise? Like you said, Cruising the Coast is America's largest block party, right. and it is. Yeah. We we cover that 60, 70-mile stretch of uh, coastal Mississippi. We literally go state line to state line. Mm-hmm. Uh, Waveland, Mississippi came back with an event this year for the first time since 2006. Yeah. So we have all three counties, Come all 12 now. municipalities involved with cruising. Yeah. But you can see anything from a $250 heap to a $2 million show car okay. at cruising the coast. And what makes us unique or at least different from almost any other car event in the country yeah. is our emphasis is on driving. Okay. You can go to other shows where you sit and park in the fairgrounds for days. And that's great. Right. If that's your thing. Right. Okay. But we drive our cars. Right. You know, people come with show cars say, well, 
I don't even put oil or gas in my car. So, well, maybe you need to stay home. <laughs> you know, this ain't your event because we drive, right? Yeah, we move we, these cars. We drive our cars. Right. I mean, you know, we're one of the few places left in the country where you can die, drive down a scenic highway and see the beach. Yeah, 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 yeah. And see the beach from your car. Right. I always like as you come down that you see trailers pulling the cars, and then when you get down here, you see the cars driving. Yeah. You know, some people choose to trailer in, uh, but I'm telling you, we've got people here from Oregon, Washington State, New York, and Maryland that I know for a fact yeah. who have driven their cars down. Oh, that's great. That's great. So, saw a friend of mine this morning. They're from Maryland. Uh, they spend summer times uh, down here on the coast. Right. And they drive their cars down from Maryland. Yeah. They, they, they put it on a road. But like four and five of them, they caravan down. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome, Craig. So you can see these cars on the move, you know? Right, right, right. Um, when it comes down to working on cars, does any of that go down around here? Are people literally mechanics are helping people out if need be? Yeah, they are. You know, with, with older cars, you've got some overheating issues and, and, and anything, you know, any kind of issue you can imagine with an older car is probably going to happen during cruising the coast. Right. And that's one good thing about the car culture. We're all brothers and sisters. No matter what you have, no matter what you drive, I happen to own Ford Mustang. Right. But if I see somebody broken down on the side of the road in his Plymouth, I'm going to stop and see if I can give assistance. Right, right, right. You're you know, right. I've been broken down on the side of the road, and people I didn't even know stop, you know, and help. And, oh, yeah, your, your battery cable broke, you know. And God wouldn't let me get my hands dirty. He shoved his hands down there and kind of take the day. It's a true story. Right, right, it's right. This happened in right. downtown Gulfport to me several years ago. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I didn't even know. <laughs> the good thing is we brought an ASC certified mechanic, and he's right here, Coach Charlie. So if anybody breaks down out here, he'll be able to help. We we can keep Coach busy <laughs> through the end of the week. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> look, look, look at all the oil spots on Highway 9. That's Coach. right. That's Talk right. about some of the events surrounding cars that they can get into later on this week if they come down. Uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday really are our, our hallmark, our marquee okay. events. Uh, we have six different block parties, like I said, in the three different counties uh, across South Mississippi, those cities you named earlier. Yeah. And they will be open from 9 to 5. They have live music. I have 21 different bands playing every day for three days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, spectators participants everybody's invited everything for cruising the coast is free except the swap meet and the automobile auction right you know <laughs> yeah 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 so people That's can, awesome people can come in they can go to bay st louis or ocean springs or past christian any one of those six cities uh you know find a place to park and come in and see these cars yeah, yeah. you know people's awesome. pride and joy people's, love heaps, people's wrecks i love you them, know I love and them. uh like i said every venue has live music uh souvenirs for sale you know and of course food and drink and and wonderful uh mississippi golf seafood yeah and, and that kind of stuff and they can enjoy soak up our culture down here right right now craig before i let you go because i know you're gonna all you're gonna toss me somebody one of the vendors you're gonna toss the vendors to me but i of the one of the sponsors to me but i wanted to know um what is one of your dream cars personally my dream car would be that Aston Martin that James Bond drives, but that's an ego thing. <laughs> yes, that is you an like ego that. thing. <laughs> but I, I've always liked British sports cars, and I, I've had British sports cars before. I don't have them because I'd be broken down on the side road. Need coach to come save me. <laughs> Help you. But if I can get my hands on a twelve-cylinder Jaguar XKE, I would die happy. Come on now, Craig. I, I'm telling you, girl. I'm telling you. <laughs> come on now. All right, coach, your turn. Well, we want you to get happy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your dream car well, you know I, I like fords and i like their mustangs you know i like a 66 or a 65 mustang uh i would leave it original and i would do it convertible yeah i'm a convertible kind of guy you you got to have the top down yeah. and, and here in south mississippi oh my gosh you know we we ride with the top down 10 months out, out of the year you just turn the air conditioner or the heater on right that's right you know right and make it work and make it work. So when it comes down to mine, mine is actually the Ford Bronco. 
on the big tires with the top blow it off. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like the small body Bronco or the big body Bronco? I like the old body, the, the OJ big... Simpson Bronco. Oh, oh, God. There we go. The big one there we there. go. You can see her going slow down. Behind. Yeah. <laughs> I like that old one. What do you want to talk about, Craig? I, I just want to give people an idea out there, the scope of cruising. We talked okay. about the distance and everything yeah, else that yeah, we covered. Yeah. But this year, I mean, this was as of 10 minutes ago, we had 9,792 cars registered. They come from 45 states, Canada, England, and yesterday two dudes from Germany came up and registered a Volkswagen. Wow. That's wow. Awesome. Of course they brought the Volkswagen. Of course. What would you expect? Right. You know? Of course, our guy from England owns a 1979 Ford Thunderbird, and, you know, instead of that Aston Martin right. that I want, right. you know. Right. So his dream car is the Ford and yours is that. Yeah. That's it. But that, that kind of shows the reach. And when I talk to people, so, well, how did you hear about cruising the coast? Because we do marketing like every other event. Yeah. Most people tell me word of mouth. Okay. So our participants, our spectators, our customers, so to speak, they're happy. Yeah. They love it down here. They yeah. love Mississippi. They love what we do. Let me tell you what I love about it. I feel safe. And that's important to me. Yeah. yeah. Well, can see, feel safe. Yeah. yeah. Sure. That's important. Sure. And I love the I, I love the feeling that I feel down here where you can just hang out and feel safe. It's, so. it, 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 it's about that. It's about hospitality big yeah. time for us. You know, there's only four of us that work on cruising the coast staff, and this is my year-round job. Right. This is what I do. Um, but as people come down, you know, spectators come down and look, they'll see people in the yellow T-shirts that say staff on. Mm -hmm. I've got 650 to 700 volunteers from those 12 car clubs you mentioned earlier yeah. that dedicate their time. Right. Some three or four days, some eight, nine, ten days. Right. You know, some of us help us work on cruising the coast all year long as volunteers. Right. You know, and I give them a donut in the morning, a hamburger for lunch, and they're happy. <laughs> and that's pretty cheap labor. That too, but it's a well-oiled machine. That's people right. people are willing to, to donate their time like that. It is. Uh, you know, we're, we try to be good to our volunteers. They enjoy it. It's that car culture we talked about earlier. Oh, right. You know, broken down on the side of the road. It extends to our car club. Right, right. You know, and there's some people live within just a handful of miles from me yeah. but i only see them once a year at cruising the coast yeah. and it's like all home week on opening day yeah you know yeah yeah and, and see people from all over the country that i've met and and see them once a year yeah you know yeah that's awesome that is awesome craig you know i've enjoyed you and you know you're going to be on the show tomorrow for next stop mississippi right you're going to hit us back right i'll be here okay okay that's great if anybody wanted more information about cruising the coast where could they go they could go to our website cruising the coast.com it's got a full schedule it's got maps explanation explanations all kind of stuff on it and of course we also have a facebook page yeah. go to the official cruising the coast facebook page and we'll post stuff on there every day that's awesome okay go ahead and introduce your sponsors because i want to get them over here to talk about some food yeah we, we were very <laughs> fortunate to have a presenting sponsor come on this year uh and it's kind of something near and dear to our hearts as well uh but mississippi gulf fresh seafood and one thing I always tell my volunteers is if people ask you, where's your favorite place to get a shrimp po' boy, tell them. Okay. Tell them. But make sure they're eating that Mississippi Gulf Fresh Seafood okay. when you direct them to places. Okay. So, and we're very lucky to partner up with those guys. Uh and they'll tell you more about the shrimps they're doing out here. Got it. Got it. Well, Craig, thank you so much for Thanks joining for having us. me. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. Come on, y'all. Come on. So right now we're going to introduce um, who Craig just set up, the Mississippi Gulf Fresh Seafood. Um, tell me your name. Who? Uh, Rick Burris. Hey, Rick. Well, welcome to AutoCorrect here on MPB Think Radio. Talk about the partnership with, with Craig and Cruz and how great has that been for you all? Oh, this has been wonderful. Um, you know, we, we promote Mississippi Gulf Fresh Seafood year round, but to be able to come out here and be able to touch all these people from all over the country, like you just mentioned, is, is great. Right. We've, we've been able to see a lot of people every day at a, a lot of different locations. Right. Is this your first year cruising the coast? It's mine. And, and it is our, our first year. Y'all's first year as sponsor. That's awesome. That is pretty awesome. Now, I want to talk about what's your favorite dream car now, Rick? Well, you're asking the wrong person. Uh, <laughs> I'm more into seafood than I am cars. 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 Yeah. You, have you been have you been viewing some of the cars? Oh yeah, it is. See? I have. We've been we've been able to walk around when we had a break and see all these beautiful cars and yeah. just, just enjoy being here. Yeah, good weather, great cars, and good food. Let's talk about that. 
when it comes down to the food, what can I expect to eat today, Rick? So we have we're we're offering some some shrimp samples. We we boil some shrimp. We boil I think uh, we're boiling about three or four hundred pounds a day to be able to give out to to people that come by uh, just to promote Mississippi Gulf Fresh Seafood. Um, we want everybody down here that while they're going to restaurants, if they're going to take some back, going to these retail outlets, uh, that they ask for Mississippi product, local product, and not none of the import stuff. Right, right. And everybody, all of that is here. We are live from cruising central that's at 200 east beach boulevard in gulfport mississippi so that's where all of the action begins but of course the action goes the full 30 mile stretch of the beach but when it comes down to to y'all how long have y'all been in business with with mississippi gulf fresh well so we're we're actually a state agency we're the department of marine resources and we um we we manage all the marine resources in the uh awesome. in the uh in, in in the state of mississippi and that, uh, that seafood as well and so we're out here promoting our commercial fishermen um and making sure that like i said people uh are are see our product see mississippi product our commercial fishermen's product is a superior product over all the imports right fresh local that's what i'm saying that's, that, right. that's fresh local that's right. we saw some of that coming out to sea this morning when we walked out so um fresh local and then whenever y'all want to come back by mpb we're gonna let y'all come on through deep south dining and y'all can tell us more about we'd be happy to <laughs> seafood well i'm gonna try to eat just as much as i can of uh, fresh mississippi's <laughs> That'd be awesome. If anybody wanted more information about you all, where could they go? So we have a website, MississippiSeafood.com, and on that is all the information about the marketing and the promoting that we're doing. It also has links to retailers and uh, restaurants that we know serve Mississippi Gulf Fresh Seafood. Well, Rick, it's been a pleasure having you um, on behalf of the Mississippi Gulf Fresh Seafood. So thank you. Thank you again for joining us here on AutoCorrect at the 27th annual Cruise in the Coast. It's been an awesome time hanging out with everybody. Also, you can send your emails to auto at mpbonline.org. We're broadcasting live from the 27th annual Cruise in the Coast. You're listening to AutoCorrect with Coach Charlie Melton. I'm Jermaine Flood. If you want more AutoCorrect, you can find our podcast on all podcast platforms for your smart device. AutoCorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with a replay Saturday at 11 a.m. Here's a recent recall. Ram is recalling roughly 272,900 light and heavy-duty pickup trucks over a software issue that may prevent the backup camera image from displaying. But you know what? Coach said you got a backup for that backup camera. What's that backup, Coach? Hey, that's what those rearview mirrors for in those side mirrors. You can always back up. You know, my wife has one of those cars that have that backup mirror uh, camera in it, and I never use it. <laughs> Because you got mirrors and a window, I, Coach. I'm old school. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, Ram people, if, if y'all need to use that plan B, go with plan B. But effective vehicles include model year 2022 to 23 1500s, model year 2022 to 24 2500s, and model year 2022 to 23 3500s with a gross vehicle weight rating of less than 10,000 pounds. An issue with the radio software may prevent the backup camera image from displaying, increasing the risk of a crash. To fix the issue, dealers are updating the radio radio software for free, but um, you can contact the automaker if you have any more questions about that recall. And you can find out if your car has a past recall by going to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration's website. That's nhtsa.gov forward slash recalls and inputting your VIN number, or you can find their Safer Car app. We're broadcasting live from the 27th annual Cruising the Coast, and we're also taking your vehicle repair questions. Coach is here to still talk to you. Our email address is auto at mpb online.org coach we're here to still talk about some cars and it's all about restoration today right it's all about restoring these cars making them look just like they were when they came off the showroom floor or sometimes even improving their looks just a little bit but i'm one of these original guys i like vehicles to stay original yeah that means um the same old parts parts you know you can get the same parts but just make sure that everything's working on it and then when you drive it down the road people are going to turn their heads they're going to say hey i remember that car right right let's talk about why you should restore 
What's the what's the, why should you restore old cars? Well, if you start thinking about today, old cars and new cars are totally different. The body styles have changed. You know, we used to have the big fins, then we went to a rounder type, then a box type, and now we're at a more curvy type. Mm -hmm. So things have changed. In order for the old vehicles to stay there in our maybe our young kids' mind, or our grandkids' mind, or maybe uh, even our young adult minds, that we have to have the old cars still around that makes sense well if you think about right now is uh dodge is doing away with the challenger and the charger okay they're going to be electric they're no longer going to have that 440 magnum or that 383 it's gone yeah you know so yeah so you're going to want to maybe try to keep that nostalgia going keep that nostalgia going so other people will say hey i remember that car i remember what i was doing when i had that car yeah my dad had that car or that was my first car when i was a child yeah yeah, yeah. Is it is it costly to restore a car? Can you do it for cheaper? Is there a cheaper version? <laughs> There's really no cheap way to restore a car to its original uh, look, uh, okay. the, the original style. Now, you can go back with reproduction parts that are not as good. Uh, they're made in China. They're made somewhere else. They're not made in America. Or you can go to a place that deals with nothing but that type of car. Ford, uh, there's websites that are for Ford. There's a website for every type of car out there. Yeah. They're swap meets, just like you come down here, the cruise on the coast, they're going to have swap meets out here. Maybe you need a headlight. Maybe you need a tail light. Hey, you can get it here instead of going and trying to get a reproduced one. That's right. That's right. Now, when it comes down to aftermarket versus new market parts, which one do you want or can you use both of them? You can, but then if you put your car in a car show and it says, is it original? No, it's not original because they're aftermarket parts. They didn't come from the Ford dealer. They didn't come from the OEM. And that's the main thing. OEM and uh, aftermarket, two different animals. Okay. Uh, you can get the aftermarket parts cheaper. Yeah. But it's not going to be as good. And I was just thinking as you drive down the road here, if you were in an accident in one of these nice heavy cars that scares me that's all i was thinking this whole time while they're out here driving i'd be like my soul would be hurt but you know there are insurances that you can get for these cars as well it's not uh it's not as expensive they're not going to insure it say like he said you have one that's a two million dollar car to a 250 dollar car well you you can get insurance, but it's not like full coverage or collision, nothing like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. No. So if it's aftermarket, if you get hit, you might not have to come up off all that money. Well, it, usually if it's aftermarket, what they do on a classic car, they insure it for a certain amount. Yeah. And that's it. Okay. They're not going to insure it for any more. And, you know, I always think about what does a car really, what is the value to you mm -hmm. as an individual of having that car? Maybe that car means more to you sentimental than it does uh, monetarily. Right. And so you don't want to get rid of the car. You, nobody can buy that car with all the money because it means something to you as an individual. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Talk about obsolete parts. Well, when you think about obsolete parts, they're, uh, you know, for about every 10 years, they quit making parts for certain vehicles, no matter what vehicles are. So if you got a 50 year old car now, one thing that Chris didn't, uh, Craig didn't tell you is that every vehicle that is here in the cruise on the coast is 1989 and back. Yeah, ain't nothing, ain't nothing from the nineties. Nothing from the nineties. It has to at least be thirty four years old before oh. it can even register over here. Oh. So when he said ninety seven hundred vehicles, well, there's more cars that can drive, but they're not registered with Cruise on the Coast. Yeah, because they are not in the the age range. They're not basically. in the age range. So when you talk about obsolete parts and obsolete, where are you going to get them? That is when you come to a car show where they will have the swap meets, and these different people will have. You know, have you ever been by a field and just seen all these old cars sitting in the field? Yeah. That's where they get their parts. You like the junkyard. Just like the junkyard. You may have one that has hundreds of older cars and you see nothing new. Yeah. Because they only cater to that group of people. So coach, do you treat a junkyard like a like a like a playland? Is it is the junkyard your Walmart? I would think it's my Walmart. More, I'm going to go, let's do more of a Neiman Marcus. A Neiman, oh, okay. That's a step up. Let's man. let's go way up because the reason <laughs> why is that when you go to a salvage yard, if it's new cars, if it's older cars, you can find something that maybe you didn't see before. Yeah. 
you know, maybe you find something on an older car. Maybe I need a just a fender on a old Ford or a fender on an old Chevrolet. Well, maybe I can find that in that particular junkyard. It'll probably be in another state. Right. And it probably may be behind somebody's house right. that has it in a barn. You know, when you think about a picker saying, well, I'm going to go pick this. Well, maybe that vehicle that you need or want is in that barn. That it has. probably is. It probably is. I just like to, I like when men go out there and their eyes get real big. And I'm like, I'm just looking at a lot of dust and a lot of cars. But they're like, no, no, no. There is gold here. Well, there is a, <laughs> uh, there is a salvage yard I go to in Jackson. It's, it has nothing but trucks sit there and I go in that salvage yard I look around I may not even get anything out of it at that moment but I said wow look at that vehicle there look at how it was made you know the difference you know we, we were talking about earlier to a guy he was talking about the aluminum car uh, body of a Ford well no longer in the past did we have aluminum body we had steel yeah and that still held up the only thing you do is rust but it was thick and it held up and I wasn't you know I felt safe yeah. You know, I felt yeah. safe in a vehicle. Now, today, you get hit. I was thinking about a chrome bumper on the older model cars. Well, it was still covered with chrome. Mm -hmm. Now, bumpers on cars are plastic with styrofoam. Yeah. <laughs> You're right, though, guys. You know, so there's a big You're difference right. of a nostalgia <laughs> of the new car, old cars today and the new cars of today. That's right. That's right. Well, Coach, look, we're going to head into a break, but when... When we come back, I want to talk about engine maintenance, because I know you know all about that when it comes down to rest restorative cars um, or re restoring cars and keeping that maintenance going. And then we're going to talk about maybe painting them and all that kind of great stuff. Our email address where you can send questions is auto at mpbonline.org. I'm going to get it right. We're broadcasting live from the 27th annual Cruising the Coast. And coach, it feels great out here. It does. Between your car repair questions. Thank you for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. Coach Charlie Melton, a retired instructor from Clinton High School's Automotive Technology Program, is our expert host. I'm Jermaine Flood. I hope you've downloaded our app for your smartphone, the MPB Public Media app. In addition to listening to the show on the app, you can click on the support button and make a contribution. And you can also use the talk to us feature to ask coach anything. Contributions help. I'll keep our programs on the air for you and others to enjoy. And we love answering your questions as well. Thank you for your contribution and support of Mississippi Public Broadcasting. Autocorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m. with the replay Saturdays at 11 a.m. Okay, Coach, in the news, Mississippi ranks fourth roughest in the U.S. for roads. <laughs> That's not unusual. I've seen that many times driving up and down 55, 49, and 20. Okay, so look, we're fourth out of a list of 10. So I'm gonna give you the the number ones. So we're not we're not the worst. We're not Alabama the worst coach. Maybe number one. No, guess what? Alabama's not even on the top 10 list. Wow. <laughs> not even on the top 10 list. Okay, number one, worst roughest roads in the US, Rhode Island. Up north. Up I've north. never been to Rhode Island, but it must be rough up there. Must be all that salt and snow. Right, right, right. They they literally compiled this by computing um the road length and condition. So they they see which roads are the roughest per 1,000 miles, and that's how they, they put all this together. So number two is Connecticut. Number three is West Virginia. And there we go, right there. <laughs> At number four, and at, the data reveals that our state has 32.3 miles of rough roads per 1,000, which is 123% above the national average. Well, don't you always love it? You're driving down 55 or 20, and then you see you, you go from county to county, and then one county has just paved the road. It's so smooth, and then you get into the next county, it's just rough again. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so they say Mississippi has 5,049 miles of roads in rough condition. And FYI, if you're in your nice restored vehicle, please don't hit any of those roads because we want the car to still look nice. No potholes. Please. No potholes, please. The Magnolia State's major rural roads are the fifth roughest in the country and its urban minor arterial roads place tip. So that's basically where we are at on all of that. We're not first in bad roads. We're not first. So I feel very proud. That's Even right. though we made the top 10, 
we were not at the top of that list. That's right. <laughs> I'll include a link to this story in our show's podcast description. We're broadcasting live from the 27th annual Cruising the Coast. You can email your questions to auto at mpbonline.org. Coach, we're going to go to the phone lines. We have got Kevin and Byram on the line. Kevin, you're on with Coach Charlie. Hey, good morning, Coach Charlie. Good morning, Trey. How y'all doing? Doing good. How you doing, Greg? Hey, got a question for you. I'm a truck driver, and uh, I was getting one of about the road, you, you tell the truth, brother. It's the road, road. I'm not going to fuck the other I drove all over the country. I'd have been from a pretty rough place. He rolled my turf. I understand, really. Are. But, uh, Coach Charlie, I got a 2001 Dodge Dakota. It's LT. And uh, I heard you mention about the, the iron bumpers on them. Oh, uh, yes. And the, uh, the, uh, I, 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 uh, I, I Matter of fact, Tuesday, I recently put a water pump on it, uh, thermostat, new radiator, new condenser, and I had that truck since 2005. 314,000 miles on it, original motor, original transmission. That's the, that's the only maintenance I've done for the last 12 years while I did Tuesday. You know, when you think about it. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Once you think about it, you got all that maintenance on those vehicles like that. If it's a Dodge, now, like I said, I got a Toyota Camry that had 387,000 miles on it. And the only thing wow. I've ever put on it was the set of brakes and tires at 387,000 miles. Wow, man. And really? it still goes. I drive it every day. And it needs some struts because, yeah. you know, the Mississippi roads bounce you around. So yeah. <laughs> it needs some yeah. struts. But, you know. Go ahead, John. I'm sorry. If you if you got a Dodge out there, you know, a lot of people don't like Dodges, but, you know, there's a lot of Dodge fans out there. But, hey, if you do the maintenance on them, because we're fixing to talk about maintenance, you do the maintenance on those vehicles, those vehicles will last you as long as you take care of them. Yes, you're right. I mean, I, my wife asks me all the time, what do you do to a new truck? And they got the F-250 and stuff. I said, hey, I said, I mean, we talk about $7, $85 for the get rid of it. Yeah, I say, I'll just say, keep on driving. Like I say, it ain't no sense paying eighty thousand dollars for a new Dodge when you can take and pay uh, yeah. fifty to a hundred, two hundred dollars for regular maintenance. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. I enjoy y'all show, and I always uh, give a contribution once a month. So uh, yeah, I'll keep up with good work, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Well, we thank you so very much. All right. Thanks, Kevin. We're going to stay on the phone lines. We've got Carl in Vicksburg. Carl, you're on the line with Coach Charlie. Uh, Yes, sir. I was going to ask you, um, on an intake manifold, I'm working on an an older car, uh, 1972. Uh, What's the difference on a single plane and a dual plane intake manifold? Well, really, if you think about what you're trying to do to that intake manifold, you are trying to get air more air into the system so a single plane is that you know what they did is just a little bit smoother on a double plane uh where they have it where it's smoothed out and you know i always call it an important polish you know when you're polishing one of those uh, intakes what you're doing you're taking the rough edges out of it and that's exactly what you're doing to that intake you're taking the rough edges out of it so that air can flow because more air power so dual plane is more like more smoothed out yeah, and you're going to get more air flowing through it once again. Okay. Okay, and did you say you don't like Dodge? I said I don't <laughs> like cars? Yeah, no, Dodge. Did, he, did you say no, you no, don't no, like no, Dodge? No, no, no. I said some people don't like Dodge. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Coach, so, coach just say it was him, Carl. I didn't say I just okay. said some people don't. Hey, the re- uh, there was a Dodge, you know, that, that 318 sometimes, it would give you a run for your money. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I, I'm a Dodge lover. I don't I, I see. I, I like you, and I thought you. I thought you said thank you. Okay, I thought you said you didn't like Dodge. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that to you. I wouldn't do that to you. Now, I like any type of car. Hey, I love working on any car. It doesn't really matter what type of car. Well, I'll tell you what. There is one car. I don't Come like on, that. Coach. Come on, Coach. It, it has to be that little runner. Uh, what is that thing? It's, dang, I, I have to remember what it is. I'll okay. come back. To, I don't like it. <laughs> Whatever that runner is, coach is about to put y'all out. That's I will what let it. you know. 
Well, Coach, I want to go ahead. Let's get started talking about that engine maintenance on those restored cars. How hard is it to keep it up? Can you get it to where you don't have to touch it no more? What do you have to do? Well, when you start talking about maintenance from a newer car to an older model car, since you don't drive the older model cars there, the maintenance is a little bit different. You know, a lot of times when you have an older model car, you're going to have it up on some type of stands where the tires don't touch the floor mm -hmm. because as long as the tires touch the floor, they're having more of a yeah. time of dry rotting yeah. because you're not using that car all the time. Changing the oil. Now, older model cars, you know, we have changed the type of oil we use for newer cars. So going back to a 30 weight or going to a non-detergent oil, or, so different type of oils in them, the oil filters, you know, you got to worry about condensation in the older model cars that the engines are not running as much. So oil still needs to be changed, even though you're not driving that car. You need to change it at least once a year to keep the condensation out of the engine itself. And you need to crank that vehicle up. Now, if you think about changing air filters and uh, gas filters and all, well, you really don't have to do that because uh, – you're not running the vehicle, make sure that the fuel that you put in the vehicle is uh, non-ethanol. You know, uh, these vehicles will run off uh, of ethanol uh, gas, but they're made to run off leaded gas, okay. most of them. So okay. you want to make sure that you have non-ethanol in there so it doesn't gel up and stuff like that, tarnish up. Right. When it comes to upkeep on, if, let's just say my brother has a has an old Lincoln that he likes and it's got the, all the original it looks really nice but right now he's having because one of his other vehicles is down he's having to put this one on the road a lot more do you, what do you suggest the upkeep is on that if you're having to drive it on a regular basis if it's a daily driver you're going to change the oil about every three thousand miles on those type of vehicles okay. if it's an older model car you're going to make sure that the fuel filters are kept clean because like say if it's one that took leaded fuel now no longer it has lead. You have to put a fuel additive in there. To make it work. Yeah. Okay. You want to check those belts and hoses and make sure that they're not cracked and they're not uh, stiff and all. So there's, yeah. it's the same type of maintenance, but you need to do it more regular. Yeah. And what he does too, I guess, to try to keep his paint looking nice, when he comes in, he puts that cover on it. Yes. But so. the, you, you, that's one thing. If you're going to have a nice restored car, you'll have it in, either in a shed a uh, barn with a cover on it or outside with a cover on it. But you just got to be careful about that too because rodents love to get in cars. Mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that it's somewhere where rodents can't get in there and destroy the wiring systems. Okay, okay. We're broadcasting live from the 27th annual Cruising the Coast and taking your repair questions. You can send us an email to auto at mpbonline.org. We've got a car review from Casey Williams coming up and Coach's Tip of the Week. This is AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. A couple of weeks ago, we tested the Jeep Grand Cherokee Trailhawk, and at $72,000, it's a very nice vehicle. I think if that seems a little pricey to you, we might have a better alternative this week. It's a 2023 Jeep Compass Trailhawk. The Compass is a little bit smaller, but it has all of the same sinister exterior look of the Grand Cherokee. It's got the Trailhawk logo here on the hood, which I think is really cool, the red tow hooks, and the 17-inch black alloy wheels with off-road tires. Inside has been upgraded for 2023 with a larger touchscreen. You got wireless CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, Alpine audio system, and wireless phone charging. And of course, all the latest crash avoidance systems. But underneath the hood, it's still a very capable vehicle. This has a crawl ratio for off-roading, and power comes from a two liter turbocharged four cylinder, delivery 200 horsepower, 221 pound-feet of torque, and still giving you 24 miles per gallon in the city, 32 on the highway. So how about that smaller price? Well, the Compass starts at $28,400, this one all in, $46,290. See the full video on his YouTube channel, Auto Casey. This is AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. We are broadcasting live from Cruising Central at the 27th Annual Cruising the Coast Festivities. If you've missed any of our program, you can listen to the whole show from autocorrect.mpbonline.org. AutoCorrect is heard on MPB Think Radio Thursdays at 10 a.m., with a replay Saturdays at 11 a.m. Stay tuned. At 11 a.m., it's Southern Remedy Kids and Teens. I'm Jermaine Flood, and our expert is Coach Charlie Melton, ASC Certified Master Technician. And it's time for Coach Charlie's Tip of the Week. You know, I was thinking out here that we're out looking at all these nice cars, and I'm just actually talking about the, some of the maintenance on it. You know, you need to make sure on those older cars that you grease them. You know, we don't grease cars no more, but all those uh, – 
different parts of those cars need to be greased underneath it. So just make sure you grease them. Make sure you do good maintenance on them. Yeah, I love I lo- the grease them part. I love now grease them to me means to put some lotion on. <laughs> <laughs> well. That may be your definition of greasing, but today on, on older cars, it's better you better lube those uh, parts up so they'll move. Right, right. Before we go back to the phone lines, I see you out there, Rebecca. I see you, Chuck. Let's talk about the pretty stuff on restoring cars. Let's talk about painting old cars versus the newer ones. Well, you know, it's a whole different process. You know, once again, if we're painting older cars, we're we're doing it on solid metal, you know, heavy metal, and we're doing it. Uh, there's a lot more, I would say, that you can maneuver the paint a little bit different than you can on the newer cars because you can fill the holes and the dents and the cracks and level them out a little bit better than you can on these others. Uh, today's new cars, you just throw it away and get a new fender and paint it. Yeah. But on the older cars, you could put the Bondo in it. You could get those dents out and... There was a way that you could prime it, paint it, and you could do anything, any type of paint on them in the older cars. Today, they're wrapping vehicles. Well, you're not going to wrap an old vehicle, an old car that you're restoring. You're going to paint it with maybe a multi-color uh, paint, one that looks purple and green, according to which way the sun's hitting it. Yeah. You know, so there's... And there is a lot of places out there, and I would take it, if I was going to paint one, I'd take it to a very reputable dealer uh, paint shop that you know that can paint that car. Don't take it to Mr. Joe Blow down the road. Make sure they know what they're doing. Yeah, because he's going to be using trying to use some Sherwin-Williams. That's, That's what right. he's going to try to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Hey, not even no bear. <laughs> right. Okay, Coach. We figured out what car you hate. Let everybody know what it is. It is a PT <laughs> Cruiser. I knew it was a, a cruiser, but I just didn't know the first two. I wanted to say FJ Cruiser, but it is a PT Cruiser. I can't stand them. I'm just glad they don't make them no more, they so you can't get mad at the new ones, Coach. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's head to the phone lines. We have got Rebecca and Fulton on the line. Rebecca, you're on with Coach Charlie. Good morning. How are y'all? Great. Doing good. Great. I know I'm, I am in the process of cleaning my car. And it's like, okay, you know, I, I, my dad always told me that, that a, a, a clean vehicle will sell for more than one that, that hasn't been taken care of. So, but uh, anyway, I, I was just going to uh, tell Coach Charlie that back in the day that there was a guy that wanted to sell me a 65, a, a 1965 cherry red Mustang convertible, and I did not know enough ca- about cars to buy it, and it just broke my heart that I couldn't couldn't buy that. But I, I was like, I have no idea what this looks like under the hood, or if it's if it's good, if it's bad, and you know, and I just I always hated that, you know. I, it breaks my heart that you didn't buy it too, because that would have been a beautiful car, no matter what was under the hood. You could have, oh, it would have been beautiful. But like say, hey, if that's the car you can find out there again, go ahead and get it again if you can find one like that. But, yeah, I was telling my buddy this morning that all the vehicles that we either sold or gave away, where would we be at today? Right. (laughs) Right. Rebecca, did that help? It did. Thank you so much. We thank you for giving us a call. All right, we've got one minute left. Chuck, you're in the Golden Triangle, and right now you're on with Coach Charlie. Oh, uh, good morning, that to you all. I got three. Co- Coach White. Why you? Why you? What, what is it about the PT Cruiser you don't like? Well, you know, I got these big hands, and I just can't get my hands in front of that radiator <laughs> and on the side of that radiator. If I was okay. working on that air conditioner, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> I'll make this quick. I let two older cars get away from me. Uh, Impala Super Sports 64 327, then a Corvair 68 oh. Corvair convertible. Oh. Let, yeah. Hey, but you know, my, like I say, you just think those cars that you just let, like I say earlier, you just let them get away. You didn't know what they were worth, and then, wow. Oh. <laughs> That's all I can say. Chuck, we thank you so much for giving us a call. That'll wrap us up for today's AutoCorrect, our show engineer and MVP behind the board, Abram Nanny. 
um, call screener. That was him, too. <laughs> For Coach Charlie Melton, Master Technician, I'm Jermaine Flood. Hey, tune in to Next Stop Mississippi tomorrow at 10 a.m. for more on-the-road live action from the 27th annual Cruise in the Coast. Thanks for listening to AutoCorrect on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.